Looking up at the sky, searching for almost high. He rejected the way of worshiping gods of clay. Prophet Ibrahim knew that Allah was near. And that the heart of a Muslim is sincere. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Welcome to this evening's live edition of Hasten to Goodness. Indeed, you guys, our phone numbers are on the screen. So please get, continue to call us and ask the, the Sheikh any uh, questions uh, you want. For those of you who tuned in last night, Sheikh Kareem was talking about uh, preparing for the afterlife. We talked about a lot of technicalities about graves and, and other sorts of things. But in this episode, we're going to talk about preparation for the final abode for the afterlife in detail, insha'Allah. Uh, Sheikh Kareem, thank you for, for being here. Thank you for letting me host your program, Hasten to Goodness. Jazakallah khair, Malik. It's my pleasure to be on your program. <laughs> thank you, Sheikh. <laughs> Sheikh, we do know the Prophet, peace be upon him, he did tell us uh, that whoever loves to meet Allah, Allah lives to meet him. Mm. On the other hand, Aisha also said, uh, who we all hate death. So naturally, we're enjoying the luxuries of life and we love this world, we love our family and friends, but how, so how can we reprogram ourselves to prepare ourselves for, for death. We naturally hate it. Yeah. Well, uh, the, uh, the hadith uh, uh, in Sahih al-Bukhari, uh, Kitab al-Riqaq, the book of the softening of the heart, the softness of the heart. You know, if you want to soften your heart, um, just uh, read that uh, beautiful book in Sahih al-Bukhari. Uh, the hadith reads that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that, man ahabba liqa Allah, he ahabba Allah liqa. Whosoever loves uh, to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah will love to meet him too. وَمَنْ كَرِهَ لِقَاءَ اللَّهِ كَرِهَ اللَّهُ لِقَاءَ And whoever hates the meeting of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah will hate his meeting as well. Now, for us to meet Allah, Aisha radiallahu anha, you mentioned her, because she is the one who questioned uh, that statement. She knows that the only time we will meet Allah is in the day of resurrection. If Allah wills, you know, to, to, to see him. Uh, now, in order to make it to the day of resurrection, we must die. Of course. Certainly. So consequently, she said, who doesn't hate death? Right. Who doesn't hate it? Because for me to love, to meet Allah, that means... I have to die. I have to die. And I have to love death as well. Now, like you said, by inclination, by nature, yeah, yes. we do love death. Um, uh, the soul likes uh, the everlasting. Uh, and, and, and this is the game that Satan played on our father Adam when he wanted him to eat from the tree, if you recall. Yes. He said, if you eat from that tree, what will happen? You will live forever. You will live forever. And that's what tempted him. That's what tempted him. <laughs> and, and also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made paradise, the everlasting abode. Uh, one of its names is the everlasting place, Darul Muqama, uh, that we will not uh, experience death anymore there uh, as an incentive. Um, so inshallah, maybe um, we will sit and, and discuss that okay. because this uh, requires... Uh, an explanation okay. and uh, Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did explain it in a beautiful way and I'm looking so much forward to share it with the viewers. Okay, Sheikh, we'll take a quick break and we'll get right back sure. into the topic. Uh, you guys at home, stay tuned to Hasten to Goodness with Sheikh Kareem Abu Zaid and don't feel shy to give us a call. We're waiting for your phone calls. has dawned upon us with its merits and blessings combined in it the Quran was given to Muhammad peace and blessings be upon his soul without Iman being Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh this is your brother Gabe at Romani please join me live this Ramadan Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday from 5 to 6 p.m. UAE time live from Dubai and also which corresponds with 1 to 2 p.m. GMT time for Ramadan spirit. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us with this amazing month, Ramadan, a month of reaffirming our spirit, of reaffirming our faith, of reconnecting with the speech, with the Quran, of fasting, which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us that this is for what? To achieve taqwa. Please join me 
as I will bring some amazing guests, amazing topics, such as the revelation of the Quran, miracles of the Quran, the importance of fasting, the importance of brotherhood in Islam, the importance of knowing the history of Islam during Ramadan, and many other things. Join us live. Put a light in every home. Blessed month has dawned upon us with its merits and blessings combined. In it, the Quran was revealed to Muhammad. Peace and blessings be upon his soul. Without Iman being uplifted from reading the Holy Quran. Huda TV's social media sites are the best way to contact us from anywhere around the world. Stay connected with Huda TV's latest news and programs through Facebook, Twitter, Google+, YouTube, Skype, and Instagram. It's fast and easy. Stay up to date with your favorite shows and scholars today. Huda TV, a light in every home. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome back to Hasten to Goodness. We are live, so feel free to give us a call and ask Sheikh Kareem any question you would like. Uh, if you're just tuning in, uh, we're talking about preparation uh, for the afterlife. Uh, Sheikh Kareem, thank you for staying with me. Uh, in the first segment there, you had wanted to mention a hadith that would really clarify the statement made by Aisha when she said, I believe to the effect that don't we all hate death? Indeed, it's a natural inclination, inclination of everyone, as you mentioned. So how did the Prophet, peace be upon him, explain the statement made by Aisha? Well, uh, alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah wa ashadu an la ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika lah wa ashadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluh. Uh, just to uh, remind the viewers of uh, what has been said, uh, Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam uh, made that statement, whoever loves to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will love to meet him. And whoever hates to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will hate to meet him as well. Now, the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam know that we cannot see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this world. And the only way we are to see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or we will see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is to die and then be resurrected and then we'll see Allah if he wills in the day of resurrection and for sure in Jannah, inshallah. inshallah. Now, immediately Aisha radiallahu anha, and the Rasul sallallahu actually made, he, he, he told the companions that, اعلموا أنكم لن ترون ربكم حتى تموتوا Rest assured that you will not be able to see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala until you die. So now Aisha radiallahu anha immediately, وَأَيُّنَا لَا يَكْرَهُ الْمَوْتِ Who amongst us does not hate death. death. And it is true. Yes. Uh, even in, in, a, in a, a beautiful hadith, uh, 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 في صحيح البخاري, uh, hadith Qudsi Malik, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, مَنْ عَادَ لِي وَلِيًّا فَقَدْ آذَنْتُهُ بِالْحَرْبِ Whosoever has animosity or enmity against uh, my friends, I will declare war against that person. Now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala explained to us how do you become a friend of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He said, وَمَا تَقَرَّبَ إِلَيَّ عَبْدِي بِشَيْءٍ أَحَبَّ إِلَيَّ مِمَّا افْتَرَطُّهُ عَلَيْهِ My servant will not find anything which will bring him closer to me than what I have made mandatory upon him. The five daily prayers, the 2.5%, the one month fasting, the zakah, and so forth. And my servant will continue volunteering, doing extras, okay. more than the mandatory, until I love him. And when I love him, I would become his eyes, his vision, his sight, I would become his ears, uh, and so forth. Okay. Uh, here is the witness, here is why I'm, co co uh, I'm quoting the whole hadith. Okay. The, we call this mawdu al-shahid, the witness. Yakrahu al he hates death. Imagine the wali of Allah hates death. Okay, <laughs> where does that leave us? So, so, right. so this is what I, this is this is what you said by inclination. We we hate that, and and there is a beautiful hadith. Uh, I believe in in Mustadrak or or so. I could be mistaken or in uh, Sunan or Musnad uh, Musnad Ahmad that when Allah Subhanahu wa Taala placed the soul uh, in in our bodies, 
he said to the soul, one day I will call you out. And then the soul said, I am hating that. Subhanahu. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, you will have to leave even if you're hating that. Hating to, 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 leave, with, right. to leave the body. And this is why Malik, by the way, at the time of death, uh, even if the person is righteous and pious, he needs help. He needs help. And one of the ways that you help the deceased is by asking them to say, La ilaha illallah. Uh, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says لَقِّنُوا مَوْتَاكُمْ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ Prompt those who are dying to say لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ فَإِنَّ رَوْحَ الْمُؤْمِنِ تَخْرُجُ رَشْحَ Because it will help the soul of the believer Shukran. to leave his body uh, like, a, like a sweat. Shukran. Like a sweat. A shahid or the important thing, the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam explained to Aisha radiallahu anha the situation. Aisha, this is not what I'm meaning, that you should hate death or you should love death. Uh, okay. Here it is. But when the believer is experiencing the moments of death, the group of angels who come to prepare his soul to be taken out of his body, they are called the angels of mercy. And they will give the deceased, the glad tiding. They will tell him, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased with you, Jannah is awaiting you. Right. As a result of this, he would look forward to that meeting. Right. And this actually was explained in that situation, uh, in that uh, beautiful verse. Look at this. إِنَّ الَّذِينَ قَالُوا رَبُّنَ اللَّهُ ثُمَّ اسْتَقَامُوا تَتَنَزَّلُ عَلَيْهِمُ الْمَلَائِكَةِ ألا تخافوا ولا تحزنوا وأبشروا بالجنة. Indeed, those who said our Lord is Allah, then they were steadfast, not just saying the shahadatayn, right. but they implemented the application of Islam, and they were steadfast. Angels will descend upon them. Ibn Abbas said one of these occasions at the time of death. Why would they descend upon them? تَتَنَزَّلُ عَلَيْهِمُ الْمَلَائِكَةِ أَلَّا تَخَافُوا Fear not. Don't be afraid of us. Right. We'll take care of you. We're here, we're here to help you. وَلَا تَحْزَنُوا And grieve not over your children, over your wealth. Forget about that stuff. نَحْنُ أَوْلِيَاءُكُمْ فِي أَلَّا تَخَافُوا وَلَا تَحْزَنُوا وَأَبْشِرُوا بِالْجَنَّةِ I want you to think about Jannah. You know, you know Malik, I, I, when I explain this to, uh, to non-Muslims, uh, you know when you go through, uh, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to uh, protect our health and, and give Amen. all of us a good health. Amen. But when someone goes through uh, a surgery, uh, especially in a prestigious hospital, so they would send to him the uh, anesthesia group. Yes. And the anesthesiologist. Anesthesiologist. It's so difficult. The guy who's supposed to put the person to sleep yes. before the doctor comes to operate. Yes. So the viewers <laughs> would know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Perfect. Okay. Yeah, they leave these terms away. You know, they would speak to him. Okay, listen, we're just going to give you a couple of shots. Then you're going to go to sleep. Right. Don't be afraid. And then the doctor is going to operate on you. Nothing is going to happen. And then by, oh, you're going to wake you up and you're going to be in good shape. Exactly these angels, what they do. <laughs> they, 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 they come and comfort him. Listen, we're going to prepare you. The angel of death is about to arrive. He's going to take your soul. And guess Allah is happy with you. Allah is pleased with you. You did good with your journey. You did good with your life. Yes. Now we want you to think about what awaiting you, what awaits you, which is Jannah and paradise. At that stage, a person would love to meet Allah. He'll say, okay, take my soul. Let right. me go. Right. Let me go. Uh, and then Allah would love to meet that person. Even after death, Malik, uh, Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us hadith Abi Sa'id al-Khudri and al-Bukhari إِذَا حُمِلَتِ الْجَنَازَةَ عَلَى الْأَكْتَافِ When the janaza, when the dead person is carried on the shoulder of men, uh, carried to the cemetery, if the person was righteous, he will say what? قَدِّمُونِي قَدِّمُونِي Go, 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 let go. me go, let me go, let me go, let me go. Let me go, go. go forward. Yeah, even when, when he is inside the grave, uh, after he goes through the test and he passes that uh, huge fitna, the three uh, uh, puzzling and intimidating questions, uh, who is your Lord, what is your religion, and what do you say about the man who was sent to you, and he passes that test, he would be shown his place in Jannah. So he will say, Ya Rab, aqim as -sa Ya Rab, make the hour yes, come. So make the hour yes. come. So here is what is meant, that yes. when, whenever he sees uh, the the, the glad tidings and, and what awaits him and, and he's excited he's happy. excited yeah. I'm, I'm, you know and, and he detach 
you know, right. detaching from, from this the world. Uh, the contrary to the, the, the other, uh, uh, the one who hates the meaning of Allah, uh, you see, when he is experiencing death, uh, angels very scary, they arrive. And they tell him, <laughs> he <laughs> didn't do well at all. <laughs> you messed up. <laughs> yeah, seriously, I mean, it's, it's right. funny, but it's, it's the opposite. It's, right. it's, 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 it's scary. Right. You messed up. Uh, uh, the anger of Allah, the wrath of Allah is awaiting you. Uh, now what happens? He hates to meet Allah to the extent that his soul would escape into his body. فَتَفْرَقُ رُوحُهُ فِي جَسَدِهِ حديث البراء بن عازب that his soul would act now for them to get that soul out guess what they need to do rip it out no they would beat him up وَلَوْ تَرَى إِذْ يَتَوَفَّ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا الْمَلَائِكَةِ يَضْرِبُونَ وُجُوهَهُمْ وَأَدْبَارَهُمْ وَذُوقُوا عَذَابَ الْحَرِيقِ if you would just see how the angels would uh, repair or take the soul of the disbeliever out, they would be beating his front and his back. And they would tell him that uh, a painful punishment awaits you. وَلَوْ تَرَائِدِ الظَّالِمُونَ فِي غَمَرَاتِ الْمَوْتِ وَالْمَلَائِكَةُ بَاسِطُوا أَيْدِيهِمْ أَخْرِجُوا أَنفُسَكُمْ So the, the soul would escape into his body. Now for that, because he hates to meet Allah, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will, would, would also, will also hate to meeting see. him. Likewise, when he's carried on the shoulder. In the janazah. In the janazah. He will say, Ya wailaha, ya wailaha, ayna tadhabuna bih. Slow down, where, where are you, you taking, taking me? me? Right. Where are you taking me? Slow down. Because what awaits me is what? The punishment. Okay. And in the grave, when he is uh, showing his place, in, 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 in hell, he would say, oh Allah, do not make the hour come. So he hates to meet Allah. Right. So this is what is meant by the hadith. Okay. So brothers and sisters in Islam, you know, we were talking about uh, hastening to goodness right. here. Right. Uh, which of the two would you like to? Would you love to meet Allah at the time of death? Or would you want to, وَالْعِيَاذُ بِاللَّهِ We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you're not amongst those. Now the solution is hasten to goodness and and, and mobilize your forces and, and get busy and, and, and get, get going. Well, thank you, Sheikh. I, I, indeed, I, I appreciate the title of your program, Hasten to Goodness, because this is a motivating program to right. get people to, to be in the first group, as you mentioned. But I'm pretty sure, Sheikh, even the people in the second group in life, they wanted to be in the first group. But what happens? Uh, distractions, delays, you put things off. I'm young. I, I have a lot of time in front of me before I hasten to goodness. Uh, I think perhaps we can address these issues as well because everybody would like to be in the first group, but uh, we a lot of people end up in the second group. So, you see, the, the uh, will I will is one of the weapons of Satan. I will, you know that I. Right. I w I'm going to do this. I will do that. But not now. Right. Uh, brothers and and sisters in Islam, uh, there is no guarantee. We do have infants who do die. We do have uh, old people who do die. Uh, we do have uh, people who are in the middle age, 25, 26, 27, Certainly. who do die. Certainly. Uh, which one are you going to be amongst? You know, and who knows? Uh, who knows? I can die right now while I'm sitting in the studio, and, and, and they can die also at the, uh, we're, uh, watching the program. Watching the program or watching the World Cup. <laughs> <laughs> we hope they're watching this program. Yeah, I hope they're watching the, this <laughs> program, inshallah. So, uh, subhanallah, you know, there is, uh, there is no guarantees. Now, don't delay. Okay. Don't wait. Okay. Uh, that just, uh, and, and especially in Ramadan. Ramadan is a season where, uh, subhanallah, everything is made possible for you. Yes. Yani, uh, it's facilitated for you. Yes, facilitated for you. Wasting this time is, is not good. Okay. Thank you, Sheikh. We're going to take a quick look at this report. And we'll be right back to take your, your comments on that. You guys stay tuned uh, for more Hasten to Goodness. We'll be right back after this report. This is Rabi. 24 years old, a university student, an aspiring athlete, a man who takes great care of his body loves meeting with his friends, loves his morning jogs every morning, and of course, loves himself. Oh yeah, and Rabi's a Muslim. He prays. He prays on time. 
He prays for forgiveness and mercy because, let's face it, Ravi, Ravi's not perfect. It's been so long, I actually can't wait to see you. Yeah, inshallah. Like many Muslims, Ravi makes mistakes. No, are you serious? Just, I'm not hanging up. Please hang up. He says and does things he really shouldn't. <laughs> I'm going to miss Rabi. He just went too soon. It was unexpected. I mean, it didn't come with an announcement or anything. It feels like he just came and then left. But I guess that's life for you. It always has to come to an end. But is this really where it all ends? Does everything come to a complete stop once you die? I mean, is it all over? Today, we journey through to the final destination. They say you only live once. You know how that saying goes. Well, the reality is, that's not the case. Everything that we thought was over, wasn't over at all. And everything that he had done, was to determine absolutely everything to come. Rabi knows this. Rabi wants to go back. What are you listening to? Turn it off! Please. Rabi wants to make Why? a few changes. Why are you listening to music? You know it's haram. Please turn it off. Please, ya Allah. He wants to clean up a few old habits as well. Put the cigarette down. It's not worth it. You're gonna pay for it. Rabbi knows he'll be judged for how he treated his body. You're gonna face Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You're killing yourself. Put the cigarette down. It's not worth it. Khalas, no more. Put it out. That's it. He also wishes that he had spent more time perfecting the actions that would actually benefit him in the future. He wished he had stayed longer in his prayers and in his supplications. Don't rush, take your time. Astaghfirullah, make istighfar. Astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah. And not just don't rushed leave, off in a on. hurry to get them Yo, done all the time. Don't leave, please don't leave. Oh, no. And of course, Ravi wishes he had been stronger in fighting away his desires with the opposite sex. No, are you serious? Just, I'm not hanging up. Please, just shut up! Babe, please, look, Don't honestly, say the that. last time you looked Don't amazing. worry about her parents! I really can't wait to see Don't you. meet up! <laughs> You're gonna die! <laughs> No. Stop being stupid! Don't let yeah, don't okay. get to you! Uh, look, your parents Tell are born, it's just shut up! You. A Robbie really didn't want to end his life like this. Please, shut up! What do you mean married? Don't even that. worry about oh. that. <laughs> he didn't want to end his life committing sins. And it wasn't until he died that he realized that he will be held accountable and have to face Allah. Every conversation he had, every cigarette he lit, every prayer he rushed, every moment he spent listening to music, it was all to be exposed. This wasn't the end of Rabi. This was just the beginning. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome back to Hasten to Goodness. Sheikh Kareem, that report was very powerful indeed. A young man, a healthy man, enjoying life. Uh, and on one hand, still praying and, and doing some good things. However, death came to him at a moment that he didn't expect. And it's over that fast. Uh, what, what were your thoughts, Sheikh? It's, it's so real. It's, this, can, this can happen to anybody. Um, I mean, you know, this may be acting, but this can happen. Right, right. You know, this actually can happen. You know, that 
And uh, the, the thing about it is, is wishing to go back. You know, that you wanting to come back and fix what you have uh, done wrong. And, and this is something about death that it's final. Over. You know, it's, it's, it's over. Uh, but uh, as long as you're still in this world and, and you still have your soul in your body, you can always fix or try to fix uh, what went wrong and what you're doing wrong. But when you die, uh, you wish, actually at the moment of death, we know uh, that every person would wish to come back. حتى إذا جاء أحدهم الموت قال رب رجعون until death approaches them oh our lord bring us back لعلي أعمل صالحا فيما تركت so that I can do righteous in, in what I left behind uh, in the day of resurrection we would wish actually to to come back um, وجاء ربك والملك صفا صفا وجيء يومئذ بجهنم يومئذ يتذكر الإنسان وأن له الذكرى on that day the day of resurrection the human being will remember uh, and he will make that statement يا ليتني قدمت لحياتي I wish I have prepared myself, myself. for the true life uh, that is the dilemma with death is is final. Over, is final. Sheikh, you mentioned a great point, and this is very important for, for all of us and, and our viewers as well, of course. Uh, you said once you reach death, or as long as your soul, excuse me, as long as your soul is still in your body, he, there's hope. It's not over yet. You haven't approached death yet. So a lot of us have committed so many sins. A lot of people say, you know, look, I've done so much, there's no turning back. Allah is not going to forgive me now. Oh, I'm, I've, I've done too much now. I can't find it within myself to ask for forgiveness. But from what you're saying now, as long as your soul is still in your body, it's never too late to turn things around and prepare for, for, for the afterlife and to hasten to goodness. You know, we, we always quote that hadith to the viewers in, in different contexts. And the man who killed 100 souls. Imagine this man. I mean, th th this is, a, a, I mean, that, that number is a huge yes, number. It's right. a big number. hundred human beings yeah. were slayed at his hand, yeah. th th technically. I mean, that's huge, a huge. Uh, but yet, he, something about this man that he always wanted to repent. At least we know from the 99 on, the last <laughs> two. Yeah. He really wanted to repent. He wanted to go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But here is something that I'm looking for in this particular hadith, which shows you his seriousness about the act of repentance, and also shows you the vastness of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When he was told by this scholar, listen, you, nothing can come between you and repentance. Allah. Nothing can come between you and uh, being accepted again by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But here is what I want you to do. Right away, I want you to leave that place where you kill those hundred people because this is not a good place for you. This is a very bad environment. Uh, the fact that you're still in the loose. I right. mean, you're still, you should be in jail. Right. You should be in, 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 in imprisoned right now. Right, yeah. Uh, you're still out there and, and you should leave that town right now and go to that other place where people are righteous and pious. Those people are devoted. The environment is not good. Imagine Malik, this man did not delay, did not say, I will, did not say, I will do it tomorrow. Right. He immediately did embarked. It. He immediately repented. He did not wait like a lot of Muslims would, would say now, I still have time. Imagine him not waiting for a second helped him. Uh, he basically halfway through. Subhanallah, like Rab, you know, the death yeah, came. Right. Now, like we, we, we know from the hadith that when a person is about to pass away, if he was righteous and pious, angels of mercy would come giving him the glad tiding, very cheerful, like I said earlier. And if he was wicked, uh, disbeliever, uh, uh, a hypocrite, and, and, or, or so forth, 
uh, enemy of Allah, uh, these all Adullah, uh, all these uh, descriptive uh, uh, titles were mentioned in authentic hadith. Angels of punishment will arrive to prepare him for the angel of death. Once it came to this man, the two groups arrived, the angels of mercy and the angels of punishment. Both of them want to claim him. The angels of mercy said, listen, the guy repented. repented. Right. He already intended, he repented with his heart. And then his action. And he's already acted. He did not delay. Here he is. And then the other, listen, guys, I mean, this guy he killed a hundred souls. Yeah. He belongs to us. Yeah, then sure. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends an angel to arbitrate. Measure the distance between origin and destination. If he crossed the halfway line, then he belongs to the angels of mercy. If he is behind, then he belongs to the angels of punishment. Look now at the vastness of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He was behind, by the way, that much. He was behind. He is to be taken by the angels of punishment. But look at the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You see, if you try, right, if you try. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded earth, scoot over, scoot over, move this way. And at the way. end, he was taken by the angels of mercy. So don't delay, because you never know that the second that you're delaying, would cost you the forgiveness and the acceptance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And, and Shaykh, can we say here one of the keys or morals of this hadith is the fact that you, you repent with your tongue and your heart, but you also take a physical action and you put this repentance into action. So this man effectively did that and it's a proof for you that I am sincere about my repentance. I did take an action to stop this behavior, to move towns. I mean, this is also bears testament to your sincerity. Uh, Initially, Malik, everything must begin with the heart. Everything, because the heart is the engine. Now, a lot of the viewers, I, I know, they are watching us right now. And a lot of them are engaged in this and this and that and that. And they know inside them, inside their hearts, it's wrong. You know what I want them to do right now is in their hearts intend to leave that. Oh, that's the first step. That's the first step, but okay. a determined intention. Right. Not a, um, a reluctant one. Right. Not let me see, let me check. Oh, okay, well, right now, right now, I'm going to give up if I'm smoking uh, cigarettes, cigarettes or, or, or drugs, I will stop it. If I'm watching bad movies, I'll stop it. If I'm being undutiful to my mother, I will stop it. My father, I will stop it. If I'm abandoning your, my salah, I will stop it. If, you know, right now, while you're watching this show, right now, while you're watching this, this is something that has to be done with the heart. Okay. Now the limbs, according to the truthfulness of the heart. The limbs will take appropriate action. The, the, the limbs will follow. If, if there is truthfulness yeah. in that heart when you're intending uh, uh, to, to hasten, to goodness, uh, uh, to, goodness to prepare for, for the moment of death uh, oh. before it comes, before it arrives. You know, the, um, you know the, 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 they tell you uh, the three transitional uh, stages in, in, in our lives are the most scary. You know which ones I'm talking about? When you're born, it's a transition from the womb into this world. And when you die, it's a transition. And when you are resurrected. SubhanAllah. And that is why uh, Yahya and Isa, alayhum salam, they made dua to receive peace from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa salamun. علي يوم ولدت والسلام علي يوم ولدت ويوم أموت ويوم أبعث حيا and oh Allah peace upon me on the day I was born on the day I shall die and on the day I shall be resurrected you know I, I cannot imagine laying down in the ground and you're only seeing the angels and the people around you are not helping you any you receive no help from there. Uh, the angels actually said this in Surah Al-Waqa, وَنَحْنُ أَقْرَبُ إِلَيْهِ مِنْكُمْ وَلَكِنْ لَا تُبْصُرُونَ We're closer to him. You cannot, him. you cannot help him. You cannot help him. The only one who can help you at the moment of death, 
who can bestow that peace upon you at the moment of death is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So think about the moment of death. And this is why we were commanded to talk about death. And this is why we are to speak about it all right, the time. To remind ourselves. To so remind we're, ourselves of it. Sheikh, we're going to take a short break. And I want to remind the viewers that we're going to take a break. But please indeed give us a phone call. Those phone numbers should appear on your screen. If you have any questions or comments, uh, feel free to give us a call. We're waiting uh, for those phone calls. Uh, stay tuned. We will be right back after this short break. Questions and comments mean a lot to Huda TV crew, so please don't hesitate to contact us on social media. On Facebook, www.facebook.com slash Huda.tv. On YouTube, www.youtube.com slash Huda TV. On Twitter, at Huda TV channel. On our official website, www.huda.tv. You can watch Huda TV on the Nilesat on the following parameters. Frequency 11747. Huda TV is also now available for broadcast on the Galaxy 19 satellite in the United States of America on the following parameters. Satellite Galaxy 19, Frequency 12184 يا ذا الجلال والإكرام يا حي يا قيوم لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك إنا كنا من الظالمين اللهم أحسن عاقبتنا في الأمور كلها وأجرنا من خزي الدنيا وعذاب الآخرة برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم أصلح لنا ديننا الذي هو عصمة أمرنا وأصلح لنا دنيانا التي فيها معاشنا وأصلح لنا آخرتنا التي إليها معادنا واجعل الحياة زيادة لنا في كل خير واجعل الموت راحة لنا من كل شر Welcome back to Hasten to Goodness. Please give us a call. Uh, we are live. Those phone numbers should appear on your screen. And we're here with Sheikh Kareem Abu Zaid, who is speaking about preparing for the afterlife. And we have our fir first phone call of this evening, Sister Om, Fa Om Fatima from Nigeria. Assalamu alaikum, Sister, and thank you for calling. Yeah, thank you very much. Go ahead, Sister. Go ahead. Assalamu alaikum. 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 Yeah, yeah, I'm very happy to be, to be watching all your programs. Alhamdulillah, and it's adding a lot of iman to all of us as Muslims all over, those who are watching you around. And Alhamdulillah, may Allah continue to bless you and give you the I mean, thank you so faith much, and Israel. all the good health to do the work, Alhamdulillah. And the question I'm asking is this, um, you know, as a Muslim, sometimes you will repent, you will be asking God to forgive you, to forgive you, and you will be crying, and then you say, you know, you at the end of that prayer, you will be happy, and you feel... Yes, Allah has accepted your prayer, you are clean, and uh, you even feel it inside you. But sometimes, again, you just feel like, no, I am not like as clean as before. And you know, I ask maybe, maybe he didn't accept that my prayer that day, or am I again dirty for other bad things I have done, you know? From time to time, you know, you start questioning yourself, am I clean? Has Allah accepted my repentance? Certainly, certainly. And then, you know, you are, you are running away. But as a, as a woman being, you know, sometimes, you know, you have done something, but certainly, definitely certainly. there is no way you say you did not do something. But, you know, I just want to be this um, 
Yeah, okay. Sure. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sister, for your phone call, and thank you for sharing that. I think, uh, Shikareem, if I understood correctly, just basically she's expressing, expressing something that many Muslims feel. I don't feel purified. I don't feel clean. I, maybe I, I committed a sin, and I ask Allah for forgiveness, but I don't know. I don't feel as if he has forgiven me. How can I reach that state that I was in before I committed the sin? I believe that's what she means. This is actually a very healthy sign. A believer lives between two states, uh, not the United States. states. <laughs> yeah, like not California and Colorado. No, or <laughs> no, states, conditions. Right, okay. Uh, they tell you actually this, like this, fear and hope. You're flying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with two wings. The head is love, that you love Allah. That's why you're going to Allah. Okay. You're traveling to Allah. Inshallah. The journey is, uh, um, uh, you know, traveled by... The compass. The, the heart. Right. Your heart. GPS. Now, you have two wings. One wing is called fear. And the other one is, the other one is called hope. When you are obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when you are doing what you're supposed to be doing, and this is what the sister described, that sometimes you ask for forgiveness, then you can feel it. Right. This is when the wing of hope goes up. Right. But this will not stay forever because you have to maintain uh, the level of Iman you're at. And we know when our righteous predecessors, and this is supported by evidence from the Quran and the Sunnah, when they defined faith, they said, it increases and decreases. So now when your faith is up, what makes it increase is obedience, is staying away from this obedience. Now when your faith is up, your hope is up. But now when your faith drops, guess what? Your fear, fear goes, goes up. up. Okay. This is natural. Right, right. But now it's important that fear should go up so that it will ignite you. Right. To come, back to, to come back to Allah so that you... Right. Now the scholars, they tell you, while you're healthy, while you're in good shape, make sure that the wing of fear is higher than the wing of hope. And why is that, Sheikh? Be so that you're, you keep working. Oh, okay, okay. Be because uh, uh, beca uh, here's what happens. If you hope too much, you're going to drop working. That's an excellent point. Because if you, oh, uh, oh, mashallah, yeah. I'm, I'm doing good. Allah is... is the most, uh, and, uh, and this is why the sunnah, we say, astaghfirullah after we pray. Because if you're certain, you're, you're uncertain about the quality of that salah. You're uncertain about how... Uh, w w you're not uh, aware whether what you have done is, is, accepted, is or accepted or not. Right. That is why uh, the wing of, of fear has to always be out there even after you perform the prayer. Uh, a, a righteous act. After, after Arafat, wastaghfirullah, when yeah. you come down from the mountain yeah, of Arafat, you just receive yeah. a birth certificate. Yeah, You're point. supposed to be a newborn. But Allah is telling you, wastaghfirullah, right. ask Allah for forgiveness. So this is very healthy. So the scholars, they tell you this, that when you're healthy, when you're wealthy, <coughs> when you're, you're in good shape, Make sure that you fear. You fear too much. I have not done enough. I have not perfected my salah. I have not done well with it. So this will keep you what? Working. Active, working. But be careful. Don't allow that fear to go so much up that you start despairing. Right. Be careful because fear can go much up that, you know what? Allah is not going to forgive me. Right. Why should I be working? I think I'm going to go to hell. Right. People speak like right. that. They have despaired of the mercy because of Allah. Because they despaired from the mercy of Allah, subhanahu. So that fear should work as much as it sends you to what? To ibadah, work. Right. To ibadah, to work. Right. But now the scholars, they tell you that at the moment of death, when you're about to die, the wing of hope must rise right. up. Right. Up there. لا يموتن أحدكم إلا وهو يحسن الظن بربه. None of you should die unless he has... Uh, good expectations about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is why, by the way, if you happen to sit next to someone who is dying, talk to them about Jannah. Give talk them to them about forgiveness. Don't talk to them about hell. <laughs> right, bad <laughs> That's idea. That's a big, oh, hell. And, and No, don't do that. So when, when you're sitting next to someone who is passing away, uh, give them hope. Give them hope. 
Okay, Sheikh, and one excellent point about having too much hope. We actually do see the negative effects of that in, in some of our Muslim brothers and sisters. When you only rely on hope, you say, Allah is Rahman, Ar Rahim, and then yeah, you... Yeah, we call, this is Irja. We have a whole sect in Murja. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, uh, okay. I mean, this is, a, this is an... You Not know, a new issue. This is orchestrated. Uh, okay, it's nothing uh, new. <laughs> a lot of... But we, we don't call this hope. We call this wishful thinking. <laughs> That's a great point also. We call it daydreaming. Okay. Oh, in Allah ghafurur rahim. Yes. Uh, brother, mashallah, uh, you do you, uh, salah, you don't pray, sister, salah, al-hijab says, oh, Allah forgives. Allah forgives. Uh, you know, Allah, uh, uh, and he would mention only, well, at the same time, Allah is severe in punishment. Tell my servants that I'm the forgiving, I'm the merciful. Also, and my punishment is a painful one, is a painful okay. punishment. So both have to be brought. But now, uh, uh, you know, hope must be accompanied with act. If the act is not there, it's called amani or wishful thinking. thinking. Okay. Wishful thinking, okay. daydreaming. Okay, that's, a, that's a different, <laughs> yes. definitely a different uh, uh, yes. point. Sheikh, so, there was a couple of points here I know you wanted to mention. Um, I, I believe we only have 10 or 15 minutes left. So I know you want to mention the difference between when a believer passes away and when somebody who is disobedient or a non-believer passes away. And, and also the, the legacy that person has left with people around him and even animals and trees and, and everything. So I guess the question is, Sheikh, to our viewers and ourselves, what legacy do we want to leave behind? Well, in general, I think uh, it's something inside all of us that we always like to be remembered. Uh, a lot of the people, they, they, they like to be remembered. Well, that's not necessarily a bad thing, is it? It is a good thing, but, okay. but uh, you know, how would you like to be remembered? And, and I really, um, I think that the, the best way to, to let the viewers understand what we're trying to, uh, to convey to them here uh, a beautiful hadith in Bukhari also, Kitab al raqaq I love this book so much, Kitab al raqaq uh, Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam one day was uh, sitting with his companions and a janaza passed by him and by them. So he made that statement. Mustarihun wa mustarahun minh. This person, whether he rested or whether he is rested from. Which means? After the janaza passed, right. the companions, O oh Messenger of Allah, مَا الْمُسْتَرِيحُ وَمَا الْمُسْتَرَاحُ مِنْ Who is rested and who is rested from? He said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, إِنَّ الْعَبْدَ الْمُؤْمِنِ When the believer passes away, إِسْتَرَاحَ مِنْ هَمِّ الدُّنْيَا أو كَمَا قَالْ يعني. He would rest from the, <coughs> uh, the trouble of this world. You need to understand that this world is was meant to be a testing place. Right. I think a big mistake that a lot of Muslims now, they are expecting this world to be a resting place. Yes. This life is not a resting place. We're gonna it, it is a testing place. Yes. We're here to be tested. And the test can be elevated for, uh, 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 for the believers. Right. Actually, it gets elevated for the believers and, 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 and for the prophets and the messengers. O oh, Messenger of Allah, who are the people who receive uh, the greatest of all trials? Prophets and those who are closer to them in faith, as Then those who are closer to them in faith. Look, and a person will be tested in accordance with the quality of his faith. Look at this. If his faith is strong, his test will be elevated. <laughs> imagine, imagine this. Right. So. When the believer dies, the test is over. I did it. Right. Alhamdulillah. Right. It's like an exam. You got a good grade. You're I happy. Passed. Yeah. I passed. Right. Now I'm going to Allah. And, right. and he would love to meet Allah. And, right. uh, really, and that's, that's, that's something that, that, that the non-Muslims don't, 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 don't understand. Don't understand. You know, a lot of times when, uh, when we, we speak to non-Muslims, giving them da'wah and so forth, and, uh, uh, they, and then we mentioned to them that the people who died Hajj, <laughs> that actually some people wish to be to I die. I think it's very strange. Thing. Like, you guys are crazy. <laughs> right. You know when they bring up the stamp beating and Hajj and so right, forth. Right, right. As in, you know how many people they actually love. wish for that, right, that right. they actually would wish to go to Mecca right. and they would die that death because yeah. they you know that this is a good end. Right. This is a sign of good end. You know they don't understand. Right. <laughs> they, they you know they don't get it.
Right. They don't get it. Uh, and this is, this is what gave Islam victory in the early, you know, Khalid ibn al-Walid, he would go out there and he would tell the, 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 you know, the, uh, the, the, the people, enemies. the enemies, listen, I brought people behind you who love death more than you guys love life. Oh, you see how much you love life? They love, and this is the reason, Malik, this is the reason why we're going down. Uh, look at this hadith, and I will go back to, to, to the issue oh. here. Uh, because we're almost out of time. Hopefully you can wrap up in a minute or two. Very, I'm sorry. Very quickly. Okay. Uh, nations will gather against you Muslims. Like they call one another to a plate. Why, O Messenger of Allah? Because we're outnumbered? No, you're plenty. You're many. But Allah will extract from your, uh, the hearts of your enemies your fear. And Allah will cast into your heart something called weakness. What is weakness? Oh, what is the reason for weakness? Al-Wahan, Ya Rasulullah. The love of this world and hating death. Subhanallah. So uh, this is why we're down, because we, we, we're, not, we're not having that attitude. Yeah. So when the believer dies, he rests. But look at this, look at this. When a disobedient fasiq, when a disbeliever dies, guess what? The trees, the earth, the rocks, uh, animals, and people. Four, actually, the hadith mentioned four. Uh, the people, animals, trees, and rocks okay. will rest from him. You know how uh, sometimes they say, you know, somebody who's really harming everybody, he backbites, he gossips, he's, he's so harmful to everybody. Say, and uh, by the way, so and so passed away. So, oh, really? <laughs> they feel relieved. <sighs> right. Because he's been harming me. He's right. been. Right, yeah. Okay. Uh, I hope, I hope, I hope this is not the legacy that we want to leave behind us. Okay, well, sir. You I know, and, and I, I hope we leave behind us. May Allah have mercy on him. He was a good person. Right. He built a masjid. He contributed to a school. He, uh, he helped this uh, spread the knowledge of Islam, the Sunnah. We, we hope to, to wish um, to be amongst those Malik. Well, Sheikh, I certainly wish we could continue this episode, but we're out of time. This was our yes. part two, in fact. Yes. Uh, but I look forward to seeing you next time, inshallah. And you guys at home, thank you for continuing to stay tuned to Hasten to Goodness. Uh, indeed, Hasten to Goodness, you guys. And uh, we'll see you tomorrow night, inshallah. And until then, I leave you in the care of Allah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. At the sky, searching for the most high, he rejected the way of worshiping gods of clay. Prophet Ibrahim knew that Allah was near, and that the heart of a Muslim is sincere. Under the hot burning sun, he declared God is one. Though with stones on his chest, his man would not rest. The more I think, knew that right will conquer all.